Hello, welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. In the last two videos, we looked at the while loop and the do while loop, and in this uh, video, we want to look at the for loop. Now, in the last videos, we argued that the while loop and the do while loop, uh, we start with the while loop because it's the simplest of loops. It's remarkably easy to understand. You have a single condition and a body, and as long as that condition is true, the body will continue to execute. The while loop is pre-check, so it checks the condition before the body happens. The do while is post-check, so it happens the it checks the condition after the body is executed. And that's the basic difference between those two. The fact that it's the simplest though does not mean that it is the ideal choice. And in fact, most of the time in your programming you won't use while loops. Instead, you'll use something called the for loop. Now, Scala's for loop is a little bit unlike others, and we're going to have several videos about the for loop. I want to start with uh, with kind of the basics of the for loop. And so if we open an REPL here, uh, we can look at a simple for loop. So simplest for loop would be doing our counting. We did this for the while loop as well. If I want to count from 1 to 10, and I want to have it print out those values, I could write a loop that looks like this. And the way that you would read this is this says for i and i is a variable name here, uh, in, so this little arrow that points to the left and it, has, it uses a minus sign is often, is generally read as in, and then 1 to 10, which is very easy to read, print line i. Now, while this is, makes counting remarkably easy, it turns out that the for loop isn't just about counting. The thing that goes over here can actually be any uh, collection, and we can demonstrate this by doing something like val nums equals let's do array dot fill and make an array with uh, seven elements that are random numbers. I can write a new for loop for x in nums print line x. And you can see that that prints out the six random numbers that were in that array. So really the for loop is quite flexible. It's in many languages would be referred to as a for each loop uh, in that it is going through each element of a collection in order. Uh, in this usage it's actually doing pretty much the same thing that for each would have done for us. Which might bring, bring up the question in your mind of what was going on here. What is this? I mean, it, you understand that nums is an array. Okay. What is 1 to 10? Well, we can answer that just by typing in to the RAPL uh, the expression 1 to 10. And you see that it is a collection. And it's a particular type of collection called a range. Um, ranges just represent numeric uh, values that are sequential and linearly spaced. Uh, so it's very helpful for doing counting. A lot of times, for example, if I wanted the indexes of an array, I really don't go, want to go from 1 to 10. I want to do something like from 0 to 9 if my array had 10 elements in it. And so in addition to 2, there is also until. You might wonder where these things come from. turns out that 1 to 10 is actually short for 1.2, 10. Okay, and then 0 until 10 is the same type of thing. 2 is just a method that you can call on ints. Uh, and it gives you the range back out. We can also do ranges on other types. So for example, I can write a for loop that runs through characters. Okay, and so that prints out my alphabet. Um, in addition to running through characters, I can do doubles as well. But there's a nuance to this. So let's say I wanted to go from 0, 0.0 to 10.0. Okay. Turns out that the when you have doubles, it does not default to counting by ones. In fact, it doesn't default to counting by anything. Uh, so the 0 to 10 isn't well defined. To make it so it's well defined, we have to tell it what to count by. Now this is something we can actually do with integer values as well. So if I want only the odd values, so 1 and count by 2's, I can add after the range by 2. Uh, by is a method on ranges so that you can tell it what step you want to use. 
In the case of doubles, uh, you need to specify some step, uh, whether you know, it can be uh, 1, 2, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, whatever. Um, you can also make this count down. So what if I wanted to count from 10 to 1? Well, by default from 10 to 1 doesn't have anything in it. If I want that to have something in it, I have to tell it to count by negative 1, and then it counts down from 10 to 1. So that gives you the simple usage of of a for loop and the, the range objects that we typically use. Uh, you can, of course, nest for loops and um, put whatever logic you want in them. So for i in 1, 2, 10, I'll put some curly braces. If i modulo 2 is 0, print line i. Close off, and this will only print the even values that are that are in that range. Uh, similarly, with my nums from above, if I go back up to this earlier loop, I could do something where I only print out if x is less than 0.1. I don't, actually, let's go with 0.5. I don't know if I have any that are less than 0.1. Okay, so three of the values were less than 0.5, which is what we would have expected. Uh, for six values. So you can nest these things however you want and the for loop just gives you an easy way to run through a, a collection. Uh, we'll look at, at other options. There are lots of other possibilities for this, uh, but we'll do those.